What's up, vape fam? Today, we're taking a look at the Aromizer Supreme RDTA. A lot of people are going to ask how this compares to the original Aromizer because it was really popular. A lot of people really loved the Aromizer RTA. Uh, and we'll talk about it. We'll go over it. Uh, there's some really interesting things here because it is an RDTA versus the RTA. Uh, but first, as always, we have to go up close for the breakdown to see what makes it vape. Alright, here we are up close with the Steam Crave Aromamizer Supreme RDTA. This is the packaging it comes in. There's quite a bit going on on the box. You have the picture of the deck break down there, see-through window, front panel, bottom, side. It tells you which color tank you got, stainless or the black. This is the black one. Then on the back it gives you a little breakdown of the tank. It has your little scratch and sniff code, QR code. So opening up the box, it is a little magnetic flip top box. You have the tank itself, which we will get to in a second. You have a spare piece of glass. You have a bag with a lot of little washers in it, little rubber silicone uh, grommets, screws. Then underneath that, you have your Allen key. Little Steam Crave sticker. And a little instruction instruction pamphlet giving you the breakdown and some information on the RTA itself. On the back you have some precautions and how to fill it. So putting all of this aside for the time being, we will take a look at the tank. Now it is a top fill tank and it does use a 510 standard drip tip. The top fill is actually really, really nice. Uh, the threads are really smooth, really easy to use. The fill ports are massive. They're just absolutely huge. I mean, you're not going to have any trouble getting anything in there to fill it with. I'll just put that down. Now, the, the bottom, is a, it works a little bit like the Haster RDTA, where the bottom unscrews. Like so. The deck is removable without filling the tank. There's the deck. The juice actually comes through these two slots here in the side, come past this main deck, and go underneath to the four holes through the bottom. So when you wick it, and I'll show you, but when you wick it, you just want to make sure those holes are covered up with your cotton. It is a two-post deck. It is a 25 millimeter tank, so keep that in mind. The deck is actually a pretty decent size. There's also, right here, this is your juice flow control. The larger lines mean that it is wide open. Actually, I'm just going to take this off so you can see it easier. Just unscrew the base. Leaves the chimney and the glass. Now the fill ports I was talking about, or the juice flow control, it's right there. The lines correspond with how wide open it is. You line up the line with the dot. So right now we are at the maximum right there, the largest line. Going to the smaller line, we'll close off the juice flow holes until they're fully closed. Spin it back, open them wide open. There you go. There's your juice flow control. This ring, if you take it off, the, this is the ring with the little dot on it to indicate your juice flow control. Make sure you line up the little holes in it, right there, with the two little pegs on the deck. And there you go. Now, back to the deck. I'm going to show you 
how to wick it. I'm going to put a little build in this and we will go from there. Okay, so the deck itself does have the 510 threads on it. Right there. So you can just screw it straight down into a base with nothing else. Uh, I'm going to be using Mad Rabbit 21 gauge NI90. I really just love the flavor I get off of it. Uh, we're just going to do, I'm going to run this on a parallel box. So we're just going to go ahead and I've got way too much wire here. We're just going to go ahead, do uh, five wrap around a three millimeter ID. Two, three, four, and five. Uh, I'm going to go six. Six. And one more time. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're just going to back the screws off. It is a velocity style deck, so it is pretty easy to build on. You're just going to go corner to corner. You're not going to go straight across. Alright. Pop it in like that. Screw the terminals down. Straighten it up. and cut the short little leads off. And there's one coil mounted. Quick, simple, easy. Uh, wicking is a little bit different on this one, which is the whole reason I'm showing the build. So we will just go ahead, I'll put the second coil in and we'll skip to the wicking. All right, before we wick this, I just wanna show you, I have gone ahead and worked the hot spots out of it, got it glowing pretty evenly. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to wick this up with the Cotton Candy Collection because this is, again, all I've been using ever since I got it. Awesome, awesome cotton, especially for RTAs and RDTAs because it just holds juice so well. And it's really, really dense, so it really works well to plug off uh, the juice channels so that you don't get a lot of leak by or just flooding in general. Let's go ahead, we'll run the tip of the cotton through. This is going to be too much cotton. Nope. Just work it into it. Make sure it's a little tight. Then we will cut the ends. What I do is I bring it down like so to where it gets to the bottom of the deck here. And that's where I'm going to cut it, because I want my tips to be on the hole. So bring it to the bottom of the deck. I use the bottom as the guideline. Just put my scissors under it on one side and cut. Scissors under the deck. And cut. And then I'm going to take, I like to use a really, really small screwdriver for this. I'm going to take the cotton. I'm just going to tuck it in there, like so. I'm 
I'm going to check and make sure that I'm covering up the hole on the bottom. It's probably really tough to see that on camera. But the hole is covered. You can see them on this side underneath the coil there, maybe. Yeah, right there. right below the coil. So on this side I cannot see it so I am covering the hole and then I'm just going to repeat cotton on the other side kinda of like to pack it down onto the hole a little bit like so and then I'm just going to repeat for the other side, and then we'll reassemble this thing. Just in case you guys wanted a shot of this build firing, it's kind of nuts. That NI-90 by Mad Rabbit is crazy, crazy stuff. So, alright. I went ahead, I juiced this up. I'm going to put a little bit more on there. It lets you check your wicking once it's saturated. So once you put the juice onto the wicking, double check that your holes are still covered. Uh, it does shrink down a little bit when you wet your wick. So just make sure your holes are still covered. And we'll go ahead and we'll start reassembling the tank. Now keep in mind, you can fully reassemble the tank uh, and then just put the base in afterwards. So we've got uh, the base, piece of glass, top chimney, screw it all together, I am going to go ahead and turn the juice flow control off now so that I don't forget to do it later when I fill it. So that is all closed through there. Then we have our bottom. So we are going to go ahead, take the deck, now, now I'm putting the deck in you'll notice that it protrudes in two spots. See that little corner there? And there's one on the other side. That fits in to these two little recessed points in the bottom. That way your airflow lines up with the coils every time. Pop it in, and there you go. Now if you look through the airflow slots, you can actually see your coils sitting in there. Without the deck, you can actually see all the way through it. See my hand back there. Oh, with better lighting, you can see the coils. Then we will put the bottom threaded ring on, which just holds the base in place. It's got some really nice knurling. Uh, it's really actually pretty smooth, but still easy to grip. It's not sharp like a lot of knurling is, so it really it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, the airflow is interesting because you have the slots. There's three sizes to this AFC ring slot, and that's what adjusts your airflow is just how far into one stage one, stage two, or stage three you are. So keep that in mind. It is a little fluttery actually, which is kind of weird, but uh, we'll talk about that when we go back up. So. Then we're just going to fill it, and I'm using Steep by Steep by New Drips on the Block. It's like a delicious orange sucker kind of flavor. This thing holds 7 milliliters, so we aren't going to fill it all the way up because you don't want to sit there and watch me do this for 5 minutes. So there we go. Partially filled. Then just screw your top cap back on, which also has the same nice knurling that the bottom ring has. 
go. Pop your drip tip in. It, you'll see it does say Aromamizer Supreme RDTA along that top cap connected to the chimney. Uh, the designs, the uh, symbols, everything on it's been pretty good. Uh, where you grip it to adjust the juice flow control has actually been pretty nice as well. It actually the juice flow control is a little tight in one direction for some reason, but it seems to work fine the other direction. Uh, maybe once it gets juice on it again, it'll loosen back up. So we just opened it up. We see bubbles coming through. So juice is flowing down. And that's it. So with that in mind, we will go back up top, talk about it, vape on it a little bit. All right, vape fam. That was the up close and breakdown with the Aromamizer Supreme RDTA. Uh, this thing, man, I am loving this thing. Uh, it is a 25 millimeter tank. I did gloss over the 510 pin. Um, I know people are going to ask about it, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. Uh, it does protrude. It is hybrid safe. At least mine is, but I don't recommend running tanks on hybrid mods. There's just been too many problems. People not paying attention, uh, getting bad publicity in the media because of it. So I just I kind of glossed over it this time. But it is it is hybrid compatible. Um, but moving on from that, uh, the top fill on this thing is awesome. Those giant wide open top fill holes are great. Uh, the 510 tip. You know, it's there's nothing special about it. It is a little bit loose in there. It is a little bit wobbly. Uh, the airflow has a little bit of a flutter to it at wide open. It's kind of strange. If you don't have a build in it, give it a try because uh, it's really, really noticeable then. But with a build in it, you notice the sound more than you notice the actual fluttering. Uh, the juice flow control ring works great. Uh, absolutely. Make sure you know you close it off when you fill it and you open it back up when you go to vape it. Uh, the knurling is really nice. The machining on this in general is really, really great. Uh, there's no sharp edges, no burrs, no sharp corners. I mean, everything fits together really, really well. Like I said, the knurling is almost like a soft knurling. Uh, you, there's plenty there to grip. Plenty to grip, but it doesn't catch on your fingers. It doesn't catch on anything else. Uh, the airflow is decently wide open. Uh, it's a little restrained, but honestly, I don't even think I would change it much, and I like a wide open airflow, so it's still a really nice airflow. It is really adjustable just based on where those slots line up. It's kind of hard to describe. There's a small slot, a medium slot, and a big slot, but it's all one continuous shape. So just depending on where you place it is how you adjust your airflow. Um, there's really not much bad to say about this. It's been wicking great. The flavor's been great. Uh, it's been handling these high heat builds that I put in it, no problem. I'm running on the Horde Box in parallel mode right now, and it's working like a champ. No issues, no problems, and this is a really low resistance build I put in. No leaking. Uh, like I showed you how I wick it, I just cover up those holes. I pack it a little bit down onto the hole just to make sure that it's fully covered. Uh, and that's done the trick every time. There's been nothing, not even a drop coming through these air holes. And you can see the coils through the air holes. You do get that nice side airflow dripper style airflow into the coils. And really it's been great for flavor. Uh, I've really been enjoying that. I've been enjoying uh, that whole new style of RTAs, the RDTAs that companies are coming out with. Um, the chimney is a decent size, you can see down in there. Uh, it's a pretty standard size, I'd say, maybe a little bit larger than normal. Um, other than that, it's really been great. Uh, I picked this up from Steam Crave. They were selling it for around $55. i have seen them cheaper online in places, uh, but I picked it up from them, so I will link to the product on their website. Um, again, 25 millimeters holds 7 milliliters of juice, so it holds quite a bit. That's why I didn't fill it all the way up when I was doing the breakdown, because I would have sat there, or I probably could have just poured juice in it, actually, without the dripper. Um, 
all in all, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. It's been an awesome, awesome RDTA, and I would highly recommend it to anybody who's looking to get an RTA or an RDTA. Give this one a try. You're going to enjoy it. It's been great. Um, I hope you found the video helpful. Like, subscribe. It helps me out. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything I didn't address, questions you want to know about the tank, uh, things you want to say about the tank that you've had experience with or issues you might have ran into that I simply haven't run into yet, uh, leave it in the comments below. I'll try and get to it as best as I can. Um, hope to see you guys again soon. Until then, keep on vaping.